Hi, I'm Coy Jandro, and this is Comic Book Shop, and we are here at Golden Apple Comics in the heart of Hollywood, right on Melrose, and we are about to be joined by David Harbour, yes, Hellboy himself. We make some changes along the way. Yeah, this is right up my alley. This is bedtime reading. <laughs> this is a geek paradise. <laughs> we're gonna talk Hellboy, we're gonna talk Stranger Things, and most importantly, we're gonna buy so many comics. It is time for some sweet, sweet comic book shopping. So we're here with David Harbour and we're gonna talk some comic books and I'm wondering man, you're in so much genre content, were you a comic book kid growing up? I was more of like a video games kid. Star Wars, Raiders of the Lost Ark is big with me, the Lord of the Rings is big with me, the actual comic books I didn't really get into until I got into like graphic novels kind of in my 20s. Thor and Aquaman and all those guys, like that was more cartoons and video games for me. Kind of getting it from that world was their favorite character growing up? We were obsessed with He-Man. Yeah. Masters of the universe, which I think the comic came after the toys. And then the other one that I loved was what's the one Lion-O and Panthor oh, and yeah, uh, the whole squad. Thundercats. Thundercats. Thunder, Thunder, oh. Thunder, Thunder, Thunder. How is that not a movie? Cats. How is that not a movie? Oh my God, we need to write it. Society, get to we it. Need to write it. <laughs> you know what was really big was like the cartoon Dungeons and Dragons cartoon where they went on the roller coaster and they went into a tunnel and they fell into dungeons an and they met the trip. dungeon master. <laughs> that was like a big into that. It yeah. was like playing a video game but you had no control. You're just yeah. watching the world happen. <laughs> exactly. Is there anyone now through like the, the movies and the DC and Marvel taking off, is there any characters you're like, I will see it if Deadpool's in it or Iron Man? Or oh yeah, I mean I see all those movies. I really like all of them. I've always been a huge Batman fan and I even like the Adam West show and like certainly like Michael Keaton and Christian Bale and Ben Affleck. I messed up guys who decide to take vigilante justice into their own hands. Like, that's my kind of superhero. Like, I'm not so into the pure-hearted ones, like <laughs> Superman, and who do it for the good of humanity. I like the ones that do it for selfish uh, reasons of working out their own personal demons. Right from the therapist's couch, <laughs> right to the streets. Gloves you know what on. I mean? Like, Dad! Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they put on a hat and they're Officer Hopper and they make some vigilante exactly. justice that's and that's just true, saying, those moves That's true, I'm revealing myself, that's true. So now of course we gotta talk about Hellboy and Stranger Things. So let's go look at the Hellboy comics. Let's hold some books. So we are in the holy grail of Hellboy right here. Here it is. And there's also Stranger Things, which seems, what a coincidence, what oh a crazy. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna start with the Hellboy world because Mike Mignola's style is so iconic, so beautiful. And to me, the movie looks like it's ripped, like right out of it. These are frames from that. What was the pre-pro process of designing the Hellboy in your way to look so much like him? A lot of that was done by Joel Harlow, who's the makeup guy for this. Joel is a huge Hellboy fan. He was really excited to be able to do this with makeup. I mean, he's an old classic monster guy. So to be able to do it practically, and not have it be CGI at all. It's an entire practical outfit. I mean, we did stuff with scarring on his face and kind of all throughout his body. He's a bit more busted and scarred up. And then the other thing is I was really interested in the coat. It even rips in the particular coat. As he fights, there's an iconic rip that he always gets on his shoulder and you see this shoulder. We recreate that rip in one particular oh, awesome. aspect of the fight. And also even this little thing. It's an interesting, almost British style overcoat because it has this in Dented lapelish type thing up here. And you see how it, it does buckles a little bit like mm -hmm. that? I remember being very specific with the costume designer where we put a wire in it so that it could have this buckle to it. We've done a little bit of work with the Hellboy on these horses and like kind of direct shots of the Osiris Club going out and fighting these giants. Hellboy in these shots that are like pulled right from the comic. And that I found that really exciting about this piece. Is there a comic you'd recommend for people that have never picked up a Hellboy comic? We pull a lot of our story from Wild Hunt. Of course we do our own things with it, you can't just do it, because people have read it already. Yeah. I love Conquer Worm, I love Hellboy and Hell, that mm, stuff yeah. too. And then there's other stuff just from the BPRD that I love too. Like I love a character called Lobster Johnson, and he's got some of his own stuff, noirish type character that Hellboy used to love, and actually Hellboy dressed up for as Halloween when he was a young demon. Speaking of wardrobe and, and dressing up, you added the iconic Hopper hat, for making it because he, he hides himself. And 
It's yeah, part of his character. Exactly. Was there You've any done your research. I, I like to know about the world. I'm obsessed with this world. I pitched this idea. I wanted this hat that was a thing called an open road. It was something like Eisenhower used to wear. I love detectives with classic hats. You have one with uh, Gene Hackman and the French Connection as well. Sort of iconic cowboys used to have hats. And then, of course, you have the Indiana Jones fedora. And so I pitched it to them. And I even had this hat designed by a friend of mine in New York. And then I wore it. And they were like, we don't like it. We hate it. We're not going to do it. <laughs> I want to get rid of it, and I was like, mm, "Fuck you guys!" I put my, <laughs> I put my foot down. We're gonna do this. For my first pull for David, I'm gonna say, you gotta check out what Jody Hauser is doing with Stranger Things. It's the kids, and it's almost like we were talking about the '80s and the Dungeons and Dragons and the the watching the cartoons. It's a different perspective than the show. So it actually feels like a side mission. Yeah, cool. that's super cool. So even if you've watched the show, even if you're obsessed, even if you're on the show, Jody Hauser's an incredible writer. I think Stranger Things is a world built for expanding out from. Jody's missing a major character in this. I wasn't gonna mention it. I oh seem to find this guy called Chief Hopper. Does he have a hat? See a lot of Will Byers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, you know, Jody. two through four. And uh, so speaking of world expansion, <laughs> There's also this book called Marvels that is a, an anniversary of this book, so they remastered it, and the entire book is painted. And it retells some of the most like, like iconic and classic bits in the Marvel Universe from the position of the audience watching up. And then at the end, in this remaster, they tell you where it comes from, what panel reflects what, and every bit of the universe. Wow, this is some nerdy stuff. Right <laughs> Welcome geek, to Comic Book Show. This is a geek paradise. <laughs> And we're going to move on to some more recommendations. I'm going to pick up Jody's thing. Sorry about that. Oh, yeah, Jody. Yeah. Just got, I just got upset, man. We got, got two through four. He's, he's going to be Sorry, Jody. It's totally my own good. ego. So, on the career side, yeah. you, you've done the Holy Trinity now. The DC Suicide Squad. Okay. You're in Dark Horse's Hell. Correct. And then we've got Newsroom. Marvel's Black Widow. Oh, oh, and oh, Newsroom, of course. Aaron Sorkin's Newsroom. <laughs> Marvel uh, Black Widow yeah. standalone movie. The Trinity. But I haven't shot that one yet. I get that. And so if I tell you anything about it, they will kick me out of the movie. Marvel snipers are here. I can I'm always hear aware. you try to tap me out. <laughs> but yes, I, I apparently will be in the new uh, standalone Black Widow Marvel movie, which I'm very excited about. So I was going to pivot away from that safely because I'm not going to be that guy that gets oh, Marvel mad okay. at me. Oh, so my question was, with the holy trinity of comics being accomplished, what is a career goal that you would like to do next? There are certain projects that I'm kind of developing and working on. It's like I've never had much of a plan, and I think that that's been somewhat to my benefit. So I feel like, now what happens? Great problems. So we spoke about Batman earlier, and yeah. the, the, the Hopper parallel that I saw when that yeah, was coming yeah. on. For a base of any, The Killing Joke to me yeah. is a foundation book. I've heard about this and I've never read it. Oh, perfect. Okay. So if you're gonna read any Joker origin, and with the Joker trailer that just dropped, I feel like this ties yes. in nicely. This is about how it only takes one bad day to go from Batman to the Joker, to go from, oh, from really? level to unlevel. Oh, and cool. this kind of paints the picture and the art is staggering, the story's amazing. And if you're only going to jump into one book, it's basically, I mean, Tim Burton endorses it on the cover. This is wow. the iconic Joker oh, wow. story. So being that you knew the world growing up and never got to dive in, I'm gonna recommend this for oh, the Batman Oh, I love this. Book. Okay, good, this Thanks. is great. See you the next one for you. In the wonderful world of comics, every Wednesday is a new comic book, and this is the happy place. Spider-Man's the most accessible character in the game, but there's a character I think you'd like. Oh yeah? His name's Taskmaster. Okay. And this character, basically, he has photographic reflexes, so okay. he can see someone fighting and watches them for five minutes and can fight exactly like them. Interesting. So he's an incredible fighter, and Deadpool's the only guy that took him out because Deadpool's crazy. So he just popped up in Amazing Spider-Man, and it just started a new run, and basically, he looks like a boss. He's a skull in a suit, and this is the guy that I think... Uh, oh, this guy right here this I'd be interested in? I'm just, I think he's you'd like him. He's got a skull face. Where does he come from? It's one of those characters that, like, flips in and out of so many different comics. Okay. His origin is muddled. Okay, he okay. pops up in Black Widow, pops Pops up in Captain America, pops oh, okay. up in Deadpool. So I recommend Psych. those two. And then we were talking Black Widow before. Jack Kirby is a legend. Jack Kirby was the Inhumans. Yeah. He shaped most of the Marvel Cosmic stuff. Amazing Adventures was an anthology title. So the first half is Jack Kirby on Inhumans, and the second is John Buscema on Black Widow. Now this is literally issue number one. And I feel like as you're diving into Black Widow, John Buscema and the way he presented Black Widow is the move for sure. Wow, that's beautiful. This one. So George Perez did this issue of Marvel Fanfare, and to me, his Black Widow costume is the most logical. So this book, I recommend for you to get the flavor of oh, Black Widow cool. as an intelligent character, a fighter, a, a leader. 
Finally, this run of Daredevil is near perfect, and this is, I think, Black Widow at some of her prime. You want the character to be more down to earth after the events of Infinity Saga. Like, you can introduce, you can do a solo thing, you don't have to go to space. I think this world would play. Finally, in this section, till we move, Black Widow just got her own solo title back. So the first issue is very oversized, it's huge. This is actually a compilation of different comics. So this is a, a, like an anthology. And then the new run takes place at the Princess Bar, so it's a lot of women being badasses. The art is beautiful, it's really clean but hyper-realistic, and I think this is a Black Widow. Marvel tends to, you know, occasionally make a comic that is a test run to what might do well, so it's just an idea. Mm, interesting. Just coincidentally, I just thought maybe. Wonder what they're just, gonna do with it. Who knows? Mm. But let's go, let's go over here where, where things are safer from spoilers. You've uh, made a lot of decisions here. You've pointed me in a lot of directions. I'm sure this is something you know, but it's something that I just love. I wasn't even aware there was a comic world around it, but I love Rick and Morty, that television <laughs> show. I think it is brilliant. Stranger Things is the best show on television, but it is the second best show on television. <laughs> And look, there is a, a versus Dungeons and Dragons issue. This seemed like it was written for me. Thank you guys for writing this. <laughs> and I'm going to go home and, and read this. And you get your own copy well, as thanks. well. So we printed it just in time. The ink's drying, so we're sorry about that. <laughs> we're sorting through it, but it's here for you. Amazing. <laughs> All right, that's the number one draft pick. Let's go get some more. Amazing. All right, so I'm sticking with Batman because once again, that vibe seems right. Tom King is a writer on Batman that's actually an ex-CIA operative. This is I Am Bane. Now, I Am Bane is a contained graphic novel wherein we discover that Bane is not a guy with venom like in the Batman and Robin movie that just goes Rrr. To me, Bane's greatest strength is that he's intellectually equal to Batman, but he's stronger. So this is a cat and mouse game of psychological warfare between a character that's human and a character that's superhumanly strong. And it opens up with Bane literally having taken out all of the Robins, carving blood, I am Bane oh into the- Oh my God, and hanging them. It's not not graphic. Wow, it's brutal, I love it. Right? Like yeah, it's I love brutality. Metal as fuck take it there, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is right up my alley. This is bedtime reading. <laughs> all right, so we got our whole stack, let's go check out. Let's do it. All right. Hey. Hey, what's up? Oh, we got a ton of stuff about psychotic individuals solving crime, little kids, <laughs> snakes little kids in their mouths. Interdimensional uh, crime. Yeah. yeah I get it. 13176. <laughs> Let's put it on the card. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Your work. That was fun. All right, let's get some. There's some birds. All right, let's out go. Here, I'm gonna save this. Receipt. I'm Koi Jandro. This has been Comic Book Shopping. I'd like to thank David Harbour. It was so great showing him worlds of comics he didn't know, introducing him to books, and learning all about Hellboy. That man was so invested in Hellboy. The jacket, the skin, everything. Stranger Things, obviously very important. But I'd also like to thank Golden Apple, and I'd like to thank Comic Books for existing for always being there, for being wonderful comic books. Pick up some comics, guys. Thanks.